Whiskey Cast. Proudly brought to you by Redbreast. The definitive single pot still Irish whiskey. Join the still house at singlepotstill.com and receive an exclusive whiskey tasting journal. As winter settles in over Sweden, the sun sets early, the rivers and lakes start to freeze, and Swedes renew their love affair with whiskey. Sweden is home to hundreds of whiskey clubs and one of the world's biggest whiskey festivals. Each September, the Stockholm Beer and Whiskey Festival attracts around 40,000 whiskey lovers. And a few of those whiskey lovers have gone on to start their own distilleries. Sweden has 10 whiskey distilleries. About half are still waiting for their spirit to mature the minimum of three years before it can be called whiskey. In 2014, Box Distillery released its first two single malts, Pioneer's entire bottling run sold out in six hours in June, and the Challenger went just as quickly two days after our visit in late November. The distillery is in the region of Adalin, on the banks of the river Angermanalvin, in a century-old building that used to be a power plant. Well, ten years ago, we were six guys. We we'll figure out maybe we can start a whiskey distillery up in the north. So uh, it has taken us... 10 years to get where we are now. So today we are 12 employees working here at this distillery. We distill uh, six days a week and produce uh, around 107,000 LPA or alcohol per year. The factories that used to get electricity from the box power plant are long gone as nature reclaimed its hold on the riverbank. We have a guy who, 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 who um, uh, installed the, the mill uh, and he said, I've been around for all over the world and, and uh, installed mills in, in distilleries. And he said, this is the most uh, fascinating, exciting distillery. It's the most beautiful distillery I've ever seen. So uh, we were lucky about that. When, uh, when you see an area around here, you say, for four years ago it was just forest. So, so uh, the, every, every building around, except for the distillery, uh, uh, is new built. So, so, uh, and of course, you, you're, not, uh, you're not unlucky to working uh, and have this view every morning. <laughs> distillery manager Roger Melander learned his skills in Scotland, but his inspiration comes from Japan, where Nika's Yoichi Distillery has a similar climate. The first water we drain off is really cloudy. So instead of just cooling that and get to the, the wash bags, we recycle it and put it on top. <clears throat> so we recycle it for like 10 to 15 minutes until it's all clear. And then we start cooling it down to the wash bags. <clears throat> so uh, <clears throat> and we never, never uh, stir uh, uh, during the, the, the drain off. So we believe in, in, in clear water, uh, more like the Japanese style, instead of the cloudy ones you normally see in Scotland. Clean wort leads to clean spirit, especially when the temperatures in winter hit minus 30 degrees Celsius. That's 22 below Fahrenheit. Actually, it's an advantage to, to have a cold climate when it's still because uh, the, the temperature of the cooling water is, is really, really low. So we're, to get the, the clean flavors for the spirit, uh, you need to have a lot of cold water, and uh, that's a problem even in Scotland. Uh, so, for instance, you take like uh, Kilhoman, it is still in the same size, and in the beginning of November, they had about 37 degrees of the, the spirit coming in, in the safe. Uh, Lafroy was at the same time about 28 degrees, and we had about 4 degrees of the spirit, and that's cold. Box's two warehouses aren't much different from those in Scotland, but one has a subtle reminder that we're not in Scotland anymore. This line marks the distillery's latitude, exactly 63 degrees north. The Arctic Circle is at 66 degrees. As the chilly rain keeps threatening to turn into snow, our bus heads for Gavle. In Sweden's oldest whiskey distillery, 
yet one of its newest as well. Here we see the, uh, the, the distiller of McMyra. Uh, well, it's, you can actually have a, a very little tour from outside because it's uh, windows. You can see into the, well, the first door is the distiller manager's office. Uh, straight to the forest here, so we we just waiting for for the moose to to uh, pop by and, and look in. But we <laughs> haven't that uh, Photoshop yet. Uh, but but although I saw a fox uh, the other day here. Uh, not, not MacMira's current distillery opened in late 2011, replacing the original distillery in the center of Gavli. It's a couple of kilometers outside of town, in the middle of the woods. Perfect for peating malt in a kiln made from an old shipping container with no neighbors around. Before we started here, it was just the forest here also. So it's in the middle of a forest. So you're actually distilling among the treetops. Yeah. The distillery stands 35 meters, 115 feet tall. But unlike most distilleries, the process flows from the top down. Milling is on the top floor, mashing one floor down. It does uh, smells like uh, lump. <laughs> the fermenters are on the next floor down. That allows gravity to help the process, reducing the need for energy-consuming pumps. It's just one of the things that makes MacMira unique. Take the fermenters, for instance. There are 12 of them. Each one has a name. Not the founders, but their best customers. They have been with us from the beginning, and they have also cask owners. They have bought their own 30 liters cask. Uh, and place it in our warehouse, uh, so they are, are really our ambassadors. The stills are on the ground floor, along with the filling store, but the warehouses are several kilometers away, and perhaps MacMira's most unique feature, at the bottom of this ramp to a former Sandvik test mine, 50 meters underground. First one in, we'll have a breath sensation. The temperature is consistent year-round, and so is the humidity. That's pretty intense, isn't it? Oh, my word. <laughs> Watch out for the puddles. Groundwater seeps in through cracks in the stone walls. Pumps send it right back out, and fans help keep the air moving, both for circulation and to keep explosive alcohol vapors from building up. Wines and cognacs have been matured in caverns for a long time, but the MacMira mine may be the only one of its kind for whiskey in the world. Before MacMira moved in, these caverns were used for growing mushrooms. Some of that history still remains. Uh, a lot of uh, the black fungus that you find in, in uh, cognac and in the whiskey industry as well, as you can see on the casks. Make all the jokes you want about the Swedes getting their casks at IKEA, but try their whiskies. You might find them just right for a cold winter's night. For more cask strength conversation on whiskies with the people who make them and the people who drink them, join us each week for Whiskey Cast. In Gavli, Sweden, I'm Mark Gillespie.